it says we're live now, but it's still loading in the other window. So this could be live. <laughs> it could not be. I, there we go. <clears throat> there we go. I'm going to. Okay, awesome. Awesome. I'm going to just take a second here and see if I can copy this over into the group. But uh, let me see. I'm making sure that we're actually live and it's working. Don't you love the first five minutes of anything tech is that you have to like do all these things. Well, okay. it seems we are, we're we so are. used to this, like <laughs> doing every, every time uh, in our, our Facebook. Yeah. Okay. We are, we're good. We're streaming in there. I see it. Awesome. Awesome. So welcome everybody. I'm glad, so glad that you could join us today. Um, we have a here today. He's the founder of Filter Pixel, which is a AI calling and editing uh, platform, if you will. Am I correct there, Ayush? Yes, yes. And I'm super excited because today he's really going to go through exactly what this product does. So, and I think he has some um, special stuff to share with you as well. So, make sure, okay, make sure we're good. Um, but yeah, uh, Ayush, can you tell us a little about yourself, about Filter Pixel, and then kind of get into showing us what exactly this thing does? Well, sure. Thank you so much, Tiffany. And hi, everyone. Um, you know, well, we started uh, with uh, Filter Pixel in 2019. But before, you know, I tell you the story of, uh, you know, what we are doing today, I want to take you a bit back, like from where it all started. Um, so in back in 2019, I was just pursuing um, an entrepreneurship course at MIT Boston there I met a photographer and we we were, I was playing chess with, with the professor and this photographer was shooting the entire event. So after the event was over, I asked the photographer to hand over me the photos that he took in the camera. And he told me that it would take three weeks to deliver those photos to me because, you know, like mm -hmm. things, there, there are stuff that happen. And then being, being a naive, uh, I was unable to understand what he's talking about. So, uh, you know, I started uh, asking him questions. Um, I'm a very uh, curious person when it comes to, uh, you know, talking with people. And I, I asked a lot of questions like, why it would take you three weeks? Why can't you give the photos directly from your DSLR camera to me right now? Because we are just sitting together. And he started explaining, it's not like your job only, like I have thousands of uh, projects that are in the pipeline and I can't prioritize yours. And I have to go through and make sure that every photo looks good and my reputation is on stake and I have to yeah. edit them then and then I have to deliver. And when he was talking, he was talking a lot of repetitive stuff. He was talking about going through all the photos manually and then editing them manually. And then I was listening and I was thinking like, is he the only photographer in the world who, who does like that? Or, <laughs> right. or, mm. or he is the one who doesn't know stuff, right? Like, mm. So by, when I came back to India, which is my home country, I started uh, a research project. And the name of the research project was uh, MIT Research Project. And I started uh, sending 200 emails every single day to photographers, you know, by taking their email addresses, contact details from internet. And I asked them one single favor. If they think that this is a real problem and they're struggling with it, just book a Zoom call. And 150 photographers turned out on the Zoom calls and I wow. recorded every Zoom call. And that project became a kind of research study um, which I published uh, in, in 2020 and then finally thought like if I, we are able to solve a problem for few, then we can solve it for everyone. And from there, we started creating our first product, which we handed over to our early users who actually participated in the research project. And then finally, they told about, uh, about us to their friends and then the word is spread. Um, then we realized like, Photo selection is not the only problem, but it's uh, it's the entire workflow which is the problem because people are struggling in front of a computer every single day, going through all the photos manually, then editing them. So in a nutshell, uh, I am having a technical background changing into a business. So I started from information technology, uh, uh, you know, my degree, and then finally transitioned into business by doing a couple of courses here and there. And, um, I take care of most of the business stuff in the company today, while I have a deep understanding of how AI works and what what goes at the back end. Plus, uh, you know, now we we have transitioned from 
photo selection to editing and we are helping photographers every single day to save hours of work um you yeah. know in in just like just relaxing a bit rather than going through all the photos themselves manually because ai can figure out their patterns the way they select ai can figure out the pattern the way they edit so our goal is to help them focus more where it matters the most uh, whether it's family or whether it's growing their business rather than spending hours and hours in front of a computer doing boring and repetitive stuff that's such a bottleneck too because you can do say say so many weddings or whatever during the summer but for every you know one hour of that shoot or that whole day man that's hours and hours especially like wedding photography and you're right and so that's where they kind of I, I feel like a lot of photographers underprice themselves but they also where they um they get stuck and it's like a back-end thing so it's not it's, it's sort of like they're trying to hide it and get through it and it's this is genius I really think this is a very helpful tool because uh, even if you hire someone else to do this for you it still takes them the same amount of time and now you're paying someone to do it too and so that really changes like the profitability of your business as well so this is i'm excited for this <laughs> so uh, one thing which which we uh, actually talked a lot on the research time was you know why people outsource this and you know is there a disadvantage to outsource versus doing it themselves and a lot of people talk about like though it's money for sure like you have to pay a lot of money when you outsource the stuff mm -hmm. but then there is also one more challenge you have to tell someone what's your style and you have to come yeah you lose the that. control over the work for sure yeah yeah and then you know it depend on the conversation like the way you speak and the way the person understand when it comes to outsourcing uh, so mm -hmm. apart from money, there is a learning curve for the person to understand the way you edit. But when when you think about AI, uh, you know, you are teaching it with your own data that, that yeah. you have done in the past, right? So AI is the one who understands the data rather than you telling the AI what to do. So yeah. you don't need to tell. It's a, it's a kind of a virtual assistant who works 24-7 yeah. for you. Um, you know, who just and, learns and from what you do and you don't have to put in the extra work to tell it. No, I think that's great. Right, so um, th that is definitely something uh, which which helped us, you know, to think on the lines of not only culling but then actually helping photographers to save time in editing as well, um, mm -hmm. and and finally emerging into end to end workflow where they are just doing the shooting, but most of the repetitive stuff is handled by the AI, uh, you know, though they are still responsible for editing. Now, you you just mm -hmm. mentioned one very interesting point. Um, where you talked about, you know, this is something like they spend hours and they don't realize the value of that. Like every one hour of work turned out to be nine hours of work, yeah. which is really a crucial point. But, you know, when, when we started thinking about what value we are adding to a photographer's life after creating this product, we thought we are saving time and, and we definitely save time. But what we time is uh, the most valuable resource you don't get any more of them you get what you get <laughs> true 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 that and one more interesting thing which we noted down after learning from our photographers our customers is like they're now selling better and how because previously the time to delivery was two three weeks with just now mm -hmm. reduced to a few days so mm -hmm. they came out with different business models where they do better uh you know delivery in better time that gave them competitive advantage in their local uh, area and uh, you know because they sell it in the way they position themselves in the way where they're like hey you know what we we just deliver it uh, you know in in a week or in less than a week well right? and there's something if you know like okay I'm gonna book eight weddings I, and I'm using weddings as an example because I think there's just a lot involved but you almost tell yourself you're like oh but that's all this other work and so you kind of limit yourself too because if with everything you, everyone you bite, you bite off, you've like committed to all this work. So when you have that time and that space to be creative and to grow your business and to have more passion and be able to focus on the things that like yes. you really love doing, I, I don't know that editing and calling is the favorite of most photographers. I'm pretty sure it's probably the shooting and creating the moments and stuff. So yeah. And I think it ignites more passion because it's less stress on the back end at everyone you do isn't tied to all this other chaos that you've got to get done in order to deliver it you know <laughs> and definitely you are more accurate when you do less work with focus rather than yeah. 
you know, doing more and more work, which is repetitive and boring, you lose that creativity aspect, as well as your decisions uh, start becoming in inaccurate. Uh, you know, just think about coming from a wedding, having 5,000 photos on your SD card, and then your next step is to go through all of them yourself um, mm. in, without a break, without a break, and then have to complete this job in, let's say, five to six hours. Mm -hmm. Your back would be damaged. <laughs> yes. Your mind will uh, start Be saying, frazzled. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and then you are in a situation where probably you will take one or two days off. Um, so that's the product burnout for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's not like, uh, you know, this thing, what AI is doing, I can do better. This is not like that. This is more like if AI can assist me to do it better, why should I do it myself? Absolutely. So it's a very different way of thinking. Um, and I, I love the aspect after chat GPT and mid journey and tools, which are coming in AI space these days people are getting more awareness about AI as, you know, something that will become a crucial part of their mm -hmm. um, story in future. And they are, they're actually adopting it today and they are learning about it. And, and then there are photographers um, who are early adopters of every single thing. And I think this is the same thing happened when DSLR and film came in. Uh, mm -hmm. People who, mm -hmm. who were still with film and not shifting to DSLR and thinking like, DSLR is not the future or will kill everyone or something like that, have faced trouble later. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's literally important, even if you don't go with the technology, it's literally important to know about the technology and, mm -hmm. and, and think through the mindset of, uh, I, I, need, I'm, I need to be a leader rather than a follower when it comes to my market. Yeah. And adaptable too, because, you know, trying different things to see what works for you, what doesn't work for you. But I think leveraging technology, I mean, even, you know, simplistically look at all the apps we use these days that, you know, could you run your, let's say there was no Facebook and there was none of the social media, like that's a tool that everybody was like, oh, but now we all leverage it in our own way. So absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. And I would love to show the demo today uh, to the entire audience, help them understand um, you know, what exactly we are trying to solve, um, you know, first of all, and then because it's so easy these days to follow steps when you show it, um, you know, people can just follow four or five steps and they are done and their work is done. Um, so I have my demo prepared for sure to help everyone here, um, you know, how they can use filter pixel both for culling and editing, like both for selecting their best yes. photos after a shoot and then editing them, them uh, rather than themselves, editing them through AI um, according to their style, like which matches the way they do it. And that's what's really important and, and interesting. I, I wasn't really aware of until we talked prior was that it's not just doing the same thing for every photographer. It's taking your style and it's applying that. And that's that's the difference. Like that's the difference completely. And I'm excited to see this. It's very personalized and why it's personalized again, because in uh, 2019, when we did the study, everybody told a different workflow, everybody told a different style, everybody thought yeah. about different way they, they edit a photo. Somebody is very picky about, um, you know, the right balance. And then somebody is very uh, picky about the tone curve and, you know, things like, uh, you know, from, from one slider to the next slider in Lightroom changes a lot when it comes to uh, photographers style and we have to make sure that you know it's tuned it's tuned according mm -hmm. to the way they do it uh, and and not general uh, edits or not general culling which uh, you know one thing fits all like that cannot right. work for the photography market and every photo that. from there will look the same for no matter who took it but I think this is great that it's individualized and it, it picks up your own sense of style and what you're doing so yeah So should we start with the demo? Yeah, absolutely. I, let's dig in. I'm excited. I want to see this. Perfect. Perfect. Let's see if I can. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. And um, I can. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So when you actually open the 
uh, filter pixel app and I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, how to use it after you are, have just completed a shoot. So let's say you just ended a shoot right now and you have SD card full of photos. So you will put your SD card, you know, on the reader and then you will uh, take a back or something and put it uh, on your device, all the photos. You can also import the photos directly from the SD card um, into, into the app. And the way is very simple. You can drag drop the entire folder containing raw files or JPEGs over here where it says create your new album, or you can click this and uh, you know, drag it from your SSD or wherever um, these, these photos uh, are. So very simple uh, step to actually how you import. And it's same as you do it into Lightroom or anything else. Um, so here, what I'm doing is I have this SSD connected and I'm picking one of these random uh, weddings and I'm just putting the photos, all the photos, raw files. And once you uh, actually import the photos, the, there, there is a screen that appears and asks what's the name of that project. So I just name it as wedding or Joe and Kathleen. And then, uh, you know, I can just uh, describe which AI I want to use. Now for a portrait, and for a wedding, for a family portrait, the AI works very differently. And this is important to understand that based on the type of shoot that you do, the AI is taking different kind of um, you know, results. Um, for a wedding, the AI prioritizes the entire scene, the aesthetics, the moment, you know, how you are holding someone, you know, what, what is the emotion coming out? What's the composition looks like? But when it comes to solo or portraits or headshots, it look for eyes are in perfect focus or not. The sharpness of the eye is really crucial at that moment. So I am choosing wedding as a category and then I click start now. Now, uh, when you click this start now button, all the photos gets imported automatically on, on, this, uh, on, the, uh, on the filter pixel app. And then here, if you can see my, a cursor, um, you know, it says culling in progress and there is a loader going on and then there is some uh, loader going on here as well. So what is happening uh, right now, all of these photos which I have imported, like all of these photos are in analyzing state, which means this loader is going on and the AI is doing uh, its work. Um, it says 12, 12 minutes, uh, it will process all these photos while you can make a coffee for yourself at that moment, right? So you know, um, till you go and get, get a coffee, it will be able to classify all of these photos, or I would say it would be able to tag all of these photos into one of these categories. Either they will be accepted or they will be rejected or there will be duplicate. So internally, every photo get analyzed and the photos which are not sharp or bling are having accidental blinks you know, are automatically tagged as rejects. And then the remaining ones are grouped together based on how similar they are. And from every similar set, AI picks the one and make it an accept. Now, the one that AI is picking is uh, depending upon whether that photo is in a good composition, what's the emotion, how the light looks like, and all those crucial factors which plays a very important role when it comes to picking a photo from a similar uh, set. Now, I also have one wedding uh, culled already. So I'm gonna show some um, you know, results of how it is going to look after you are done with the, um, you know, done with the culling. So for example, this is a uh, five, this is total like 700, 800 photos and then um, right now, it's not strict at all. It's just doing uh, the, the, the initial culling. And it says it has done it in nine minutes while you were making uh, coffee for you. In nine minutes, it has gone through the photos, analyzed them, and it has now classified them as 582 as accepted, 135 as duplicates, and 30 as rejected. 
right? So this is done automatically and there is uh, nothing that you have done so far when it comes to culling. It's an automatic process that AI has done for you. And then all you have to do from here is a quick review process. Why review is important because, um, you know, the selections that or rejections that you do like uh, here, which is like, I don't, I don't agree with the AI choice. Uh, you know, if you do something like if AI has accepted that and you have the entire control and you say like, no, I don't want to accept that. Actually, I want to reject that. So if you just press X on the keyboard, it says rejected and it is moved to rejected file now, but then that's an AI learning. So AI is now learning that for like from you that you don't, you don't like that kind of photo. And uh, you know, from the next time it, it remembers what you like, what you don't like. So that's a very crucial part, the review process. So you have to, um, you know, though the AI has done half of your work right now, because instead of going through all the photos, you are now going only through the ones that it accepted. So imagine that you're coming uh, with a shoot of 5,000. This number looks like 800 to you. So from 5,000, it just narrowed to 800 in like few minutes. And from 800, you start your culling process. So you're not going through 5,000 then, you're just going through 800 then. And what's interesting out here uh, for people who still, um, you know, there, there are people who still want uh, complete control and they don't want AI to take the final decisions, uh, you know. So what we understood is, you know, just, take this uh, photo, for example. Um, what we understood is when it comes to group shots or even like any shots, generally when I was doing the research, I was checking that um, photographers were actually zooming in every single face like that and then checking whether the face is in focus or not. Um, you know, and they were first checking this face and then zooming this face and then, so, so there's like, 20 faces in the photo, they were actually zooming in every single face. And if everything is good, they're like, okay, this is good, this is good, this is good. But that's a total time waste because why you have to zoom in faces? So what we did instead is we put all those faces right over here. So basically when you are actually seeing the photo, you are seeing the photo faces over here. So you can actually take a quick decision whether it's smiling or not smiling. And then you can do it in the grid mode as well. Like right now, you see all the faces over here. So you can just see as I'm going through photo by photo, these faces are changing, right? Like I can quickly take a decision by seeing the face on the right side, whether that's a good photo, which AI has accepted or a bad photo. Now, let's say, uh, let's take an example that I don't like this photo because I think her face is a bit cropped from the top. Uh, or I think like her face is not smiling at all. It's a sad face and the AI has accepted it though. So I don't agree with the AI choice, but what I see here is it says one out of two uh, and see all, which means when AI selected this one, there was one more alternate that it, it didn't select. And what you can do is you can quickly click this button and it shows you which one duplicate AI hasn't picked, right? So let's say now, and I'm showing this example, uh, you know, just to illustrate the process in the way like you have to use it. So just checking this uh, example, like I see that AI accepted this photo over this photo, probably the reason being that this lady is looking down and here she is looking at the camera. So AI has done the right choice. But I also see that here, her face is actually smiling more and her face is sad, right? So sometimes people like swapping faces in Photoshop and they're like, probably I should combine both of these photos. Um, so I have to pick both, right? So they will accept this one and this one as well. And then they go from here back. So though the AI has made the right choice, um, if even if you want, the another photo, you can actually do that as well with the same Lightroom shortcuts that you generally use. Uh, you know, you, there is no learning when it comes to shortcuts. We just copy the shortcuts that, that, you, that people use in Lightroom just to make the process more easier. So this one, you know, and like you can keep seeing the faces over here and then keep seeing what AI is selecting and uh, what AI is actually keeping for you. And that's how you complete your review process. And every time you do something, um, 
it becomes um, you know a very crucial input for the AI to remember what you like and what you dislike. Now, one thing very interesting here is a feature which is very useful for providing sneak peeks. So after the wedding ends and we are ended up with the AI culling and right now we see 580 photos, but actually we just want to give only a few to our clients rather than uh, all of 582 before editing. And we want to give the sneak peeks very quickly. So there are some sliders at the bottom and you can adjust these sliders. The more you drag these sliders towards the right, the more narrower the selection will become. So let's say I drag this slider here, right? So right now it says 507 and it's the sharpest photos that AI has picked now, right? You see the face so sharp over here. It's like the sharpest photo that you can deliver to the client directly right now. So the more you drag towards these sliders towards the right, the more better uh, photos you're gonna see when it comes to the overall selection process. Uh, or you know when it comes to the final delivery and you can actually ship those photos straight away uh, to your client and you can just see smiling faces and then group together holding moments because this is um, you know wedding category and where AI prioritizes all of those things so once uh, you know you select few of them you ship them you know, you just go back and take the slider back. It's again at the same position. You still see 582 photos. You go through like a normal culling process. Um, you know, the photos that AI has selected and remove all the ones that you don't like. For example, I don't like this one. You know, the process AI is doing right now is to help you, assisting you in minimizing your selections. But it has always included one photo um, even if it is bad. So if you have clicked 10 photos, it has included one out of 10 always, uh, if they are similar. And if, if you have clicked only one photo of a unique object or unique subject, and there is no other photo of that subject, but that photo is bad, AI will pick that one as well. So basically AI has to make sure that it has picked up all the possibilities. So that's the very, very basic of how AI is working. Um, and then, you know, I will not deep, go uh, deep into the product right now because I know like this can be overwhelming if I keep introducing features. So I'll show you just one single step after this is done what you need to do. So after you go through the photos and you make sure that what AI has selected matches with your choices, you just click the button export from here. And when you click it, it asks you where you want to take these photos. So you can directly take it to Lightroom right away with a single click. You can take it to capture one. You can take it to a local folder. You can, uh, you know, create a CSV if you work with a photo editor or someone. Um, you can ship a CSV with file names uh, to them. So basically, with one single click, every metadata just gets transferred to Lightroom. And then you click Export Photos from here. It goes directly into Lightroom. Lightroom opens up all the photos, all the metadata, all your star ratings, color ratings, tags directly get synced with Lightroom. So whatever you do inside filter pixel goes directly into Lightroom. And that is a seamless workflow because now you don't need to learn anything new. You have just used a product before Lightroom to make sure that you are taking only those photos to Lightroom, which you really want to edit. And that reduces your culling time as well as saves a lot of storage on your machine because Lightroom takes a lot of storage when you create catalogs. So it, you have to make sure that you just take the photos which are reasonable into Lightroom rather than creating a lot of junk. So here I just take only the ones I want to accept to Lightroom with a single click. So that's the way the filter pixel culling works. Um, it's, it's a very simple product. If you want to understand it in a single line, it's like you put your photos, it tags all of them as accepts, rejects and duplicates, and then you export the accepts. You go through them, Review, it's your choice, but just you export the accepts, they go directly to Lightroom or to Capture One or to a local folder. That's so simple. That is very, very streamlined and very cool. Yeah, I mean like, uh, you know, there are a lot of features as well, but then what I like about this product myself is, you know, if you don't want to go even into the in-depth of, 
what are other features and you know um, you don't want to learn anything newer and you just want to quickly get the work done this is very handy uh, because as a layman when you start using it you can quickly realize without even tutorial that if you are clicking a photo all the faces of that photo are appearing on the right mm -hmm. and and you know if you if you just go through the photos even manually like even if you don't rely on ai selection and rejection like if you go through manually you can keep seeing uh, the important faces or the key faces appearing and you can actually take quick decisions over whether you want to select or reject that photo look at this right like a beautiful moment mm -hmm. Um, and I can quickly see both the faces together and I like that photo and AI has accepted it as well. And it's like, okay, good selection. Let's go ahead. And then, oh, good selection. Let's go ahead. Good selection. So I can just keep going forward because if AI has already made a choice, I just have to think through, do I agree? Okay. I agree. Do I agree? I agree. Do I agree? No, I don't. Agree. And then I, I just have to complete that review process and export. That's how simple it is. Like you don't have to start from scratch. AI has given you a boilerplate from where you have to actually do the starting, like giving you a starting point. Um, instead of doing the entire work for you, it has narrowed down your photos from 5,000 to 800. So you have to go through the 800 and then have to see with these fast, uh, you know, face, face features or something like that. You have to go through the 800 and have to quickly decide whether you want those or not. And then that becomes the um, final learning for the AI as well to understand your taste and your style. That is pretty, pretty great. The space uh, recognition is really amazing. You're right. You can really just kind of skim that so much easier. Yeah. And I love it too, because sometimes, you know, uh, in India, the weddings uh, generally have 10,000 photos uh, on average. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> and uh, I can't believe how people here were doing this stuff without AI. Um, because just imagine going to thousands, 10,000 of photo every single wedding. And finally, oh, yeah. uh, you know, you, you, you actually have to do a lot. And mm -hmm. here, that 10,000 narrows down somewhere to 2,000 in a, in a kind of minutes. And all you need to do is 2,000 then rather than 10,000. And yeah. the number 2000, because AI don't want to miss any crucial moment. So it has to make sure it picks every single thing, even if it is bad, because that's the unique moment, right? Gotcha. So, yeah. So that's, that's what it is doing. Uh, do we have any questions or we should move towards editing? Um, a couple. Someone says, how do you decide what picks to keep and deliver to clients when it comes to all the guest pick? Oh, when it comes to the guest pictures. I suppose that's more of a, a preference for the photographer of how they decide on these things. And I'm seeing, I'm, I'm looking through the chat really quick. We have some comments in here. Oops, let me expand it. Ah. Um, I think as far as the this stuff though, I think it looks like everybody's good. I think, I think Ta Tanya, that's probably a preference thing more than, uh, the software she's um okay we have a lot of family and portrait photographers with us too there's um okay cool i think you keep going keep going okay. we're ready for the next part. so <laughs> so after this process is done what i'm doing quickly like review 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 i like it i like it i don't like it and all that um you know i can just take all my photos of this wedding to lightroom and the best thing from here onwards is once the AI culling has done its work, it comes to AI editing. So now all the photos that you have taken from here to Lightroom will get automatically edited. And there is a crucial difference when it comes to editing and uh, you know, yourself moving those sliders uh, on Lightroom, even after applying preset and when AI does that. Because when you apply preset, it's a same value of color contrast, the same value of white balance that the preset applies over every photo. The preset doesn't understand what the photo is. The preset doesn't understand what the face looks like, how to actually change the skin, how where the light is. The preset doesn't have intelligence. So when it comes to AI, AI knows 
where's the light coming from. AI knows how greener the grass should look like. AI understand the photo and preset doesn't understand the photo. So it's very, very different from preset. At the same time, you can train an AI based on your previous photo shoots. So you can actually feed your previous data to the AI and it understands the way you edit and then it starts editing like you. At the same time, you can actually use the editing of other photographers. Like if you follow some big influencer, if you follow, if you get inspiration from big photographers, we have AI created by photographers, industry leaders on the platform. So even if you can't train your AI or you don't know what your style is, you can actually use those AI and edit like them, right? So it's a kind of uh, editing which you will love and I would love to show you um, a bit of it. I'm just opening Lightroom. And obviously Lightroom will take the time it actually takes. So bear with me, please. Okay, perfect. Okay, so first I will show you a process um, of how the editing works. And, you know, I already have edited photos with the AI. So then I will show you some results that I got from uh, someone's already trained profile and how, how much it matches with mine and what I need to still tweak, you know, just to get it fixed. So um, if, you, if you have taken all the photos from your from AI culling app to Lightroom, and now I believe you have all the photos that you want to edit and ship to the client inside Lightroom, what you need to do is install our AI plugin, Filter Pixel Edits. Uh, so if you, have, uh, if you know how to install a Lightroom plugin, it's very simple. You go to Plugin Manager, you click Add, and once you go to uh, filterpixel.com editing, I think Shivangi, if she's in chat, she can share the link from where people actually get uh, the editing plugin from. But then once you get the editing plugin, you can just add it into Lightroom by clicking add. You will uh, just drag the plugin from where you get it, like wherever you store it into your system and add plugin. So it will be added inside your Lightroom. There is a video tutorial down there once you go and sign up for editing, and then you can follow that as well. Now, I have already installed the plugin, so I'll show you uh, how it works. So once the plugin is installed, you actually see something like this within your Lightroom. It says edit with filter pixel or train filter pixel. Now, when it comes to train filter pixel, what it is showing you is like the process in which you can train your own AI, right? Like uh, just when you click train, it asks you to upload your previous photo shoots and the Lightroom catalog edit with the edited files. Uh, raw files and then it starts the training process within 24 hours you get an email saying your profile is ready and your ai is trained and you get the little you the mini you to uh edit just like you so um i will show you what happens after that so after you have trained your ai um which edits just like you you can click edit right so even if you haven't trained your ai and you want to use somebody else ai uh, you can still click on edit. So I'll click on edit and it starts the editing plugin. Um, and then it starts, uh, you know, saving all the metadata that you already have so that you don't lose anything. And it will start opening, uh, you know, the editing app. It's very simple. It's beta, it's free to use. Uh, we just have launched it in June. And that's why it's very simple. Uh, you, you don't see much complexity of an interface or much features, but very effective. So here you see two public profiles because I haven't trained any of my personal uh, editing style yet uh, on, on this account. So only what I can see is public profile. Public profile means, uh, you know, profiles of amazing photographers in the world who have trained it and then made it public for you to use and get results. So I'll show some public profiles which you can use and edit just like them. So one public profile is from Dominic. Uh, the name of the profile is Adore. 
Dominic is a UK based photographer, wedding photographer, having experience of 15 plus years in the wedding industry. So you have uh, made his profile public and you can actually see all the photos, you know, and if you, if you think like this is your style as well, or you like that style as well, you can actually uh, use Dominic uh, profile and click start editing. Once you click start editing, it will start the editing process, just like you have seen in the culling process. And it will, uh, you know, again, tell you to make a coffee. You can go and have a watch. And once it is, uh, it has edited your photos, you come back to Lightroom because it, it shows here that photos are edited. You click a button and then you are back to Lightroom. So because you started it as a Lightroom plugin and you started the process through a Lightroom plugin, everything remains within Lightroom. So you don't need to go outside Lightroom when it comes to editing. You don't need to switch between softwares. So you're just coming from uh, filter pixel AI culling, you took everything to Lightroom, you use the plugin, everything gets edited within Lightroom and then you deliver from Lightroom. So you don't need to go back and forth between the software, it seems so seamless. Now I'll show you uh, some of the things that um, AI is able to do. So I have used Adore profile for, uh, for these uh, edits. Now, Ad Adore is not my style. So definitely it will be, uh, it, it has not learned on my photos. You know, the photos that I'm showing uh, and the Adore profile is trained on a very different photo. So if you train your profile, it will definitely be giving better results. But I'll show you how, you know, effective it can be, even if, um, you know, you are, you are actually not, training your own AI, but actually using someone else. So this one is the original raw. And uh, now we will see, uh, you know, this one is the edited raw. So see the difference that the green leaves and everything. Uh, if I want, I can bit the, take the exposure a bit bit back and then probably it will match my style. I, I am ready to deliver this photo to uh, my, my client right away. The skin tones, um, you know, it has corrected the color. So if you see the sliders over here, right? The sliders are not like a preset for every photo. The sliders are at different position. And the reason for that is it's an AI. So it understands how much exposure, how much contrast, how much highlight is needed for what photo. It does the color correction basically based on the way it has learned the editing. So if you see some before and after, um, you know, if you just see the import of this. So the import looks like, uh, you know, something like that, where it's, it's not that, uh, you know, the skin tones are not correct, the color correction and every single thing. I, I just, I don't know if you can see it clearly because it's streaming, but then the background, everything on the background, the color corrections on the background and everything on the skin, you know, is very close to what I will deliver. What I will do a bit here is like, I'll just go through this face and correct a bit on skin tone, but then the rest for me is already fixed by these sliders, which I don't have to do. So white balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, whites, blacks, shadows, texture, everything is taken care of by the AI. All I need to do is again here uh, as a quick review process, and then my edits are ready to deliver to my clients. And think about that this is not the AI that you trained. This is an already existing AI trained by someone else, and you are just following their style on your photos, right? So AI has not seen any data, you know, because you haven't given that uh, AI the data of what your style is. It is just using someone else's style and putting it over your photos. And if you train yours, the results will be exceptionally better because that would be personalized to you, right? So for those who don't have, so we need approximately 3000 photos when it comes to training the AI, uh, 3000 edited. So if you don't have, you know, your edited photos with you, if you are starting new or something like that, you actually can use any of these two profiles that are present here. One is Adore by Dominic. Another one is Timeless by uh, Vanessa Norris. So you see that, uh, you know, the Timeless profile looks like this. So it's very natural, uh, you know, it's, it's very, uh, 
you know something that you say it's very uh, timeless it 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 doesn't do much but then it is just it does do whatever it needs while adore is more of a creative touch to the profile it plays a lot with vignette plays a lot with grain right so it's a very um, you know a profile like where you shoot uh, mostly under exposed and then you try to enhance those photos to to your style so that's where you can use any of these two profiles and we are adding more profiles here so it will not be two it will be more over here based on portrait shoots based on nature, nature photography based on various kind of photo shoots that you do we will add more here and you can choose from whatever you want by seeing these photos if that matches your style you can actually go uh, you know you can actually go back and go to file and train yours right and the training process is also very simple you just have to upload a lightroom catalog and it just takes all your edited files and starts editing like you after it trains the ai for you so i hope that you understand like how seamless ai culling yeah. and ai editing is making your lives and if you are still doing it manually uh, i i definitely should say that um, you know you should think once whether this is really worth your time or there are better tasks to do where you can grow your business or whether you can take care of your family yeah no this is amazing very very time saving for sure but the ability to be able to train it still to what you prefer so you're saying you have to essentially upload 3000 photos raw and then at, with your edits for it to compile your editing style and then yeah. wow that's but that's still really amazing so we started with 5000 <laughs> photos like we started saying like you need 5000 photos to train your own ai and then we found like we can decrease this number because there were a lot of photographers who were not having 5000 edited raw files mm -hmm. um so we did a lot of back and forth between our systems and we ended up with 3000 mm -hmm. there we're like okay if if you give us 3000 we're still able to manage it but obviously the more you give the better it learns from you um mm -hmm. but as a starting point 3000 is a good number to start with Awesome. Awesome. No, that is great. And if you didn't have an editing style, you're not sure you could use one of these, make your own tweaks to it. And then those could be your edits that you would then compare against the raw to create your own style. Yes. And, and you keep on like, for example, if it is not something I want, like for example, uh, for this photo, I just want the exposure to be a bit lesser because mm -hmm. I don't want photo to be, uh, you know, something coming uh, out. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. so I will do that just a bit of exposure change and probably I would like that photo to be shipped and um, once I will, uh, you know, I create a catalog after I do these tweaking mm -hmm. and then upload that catalog back to filter pixel, which will make my profile more stronger because I'm giving more data to the AI on how my edits should look like. It's amazing. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing this. So can you tell us like how people can um how photographers can try is there a way that they can try this for themselves play around figure out you know if this is something yeah. that is going to help them so uh you know the filter pixel culling if they want to go it's on filterpixel.com they can just go sign up get it i'm just putting the links in the uh okay. zoom chat and then okay. Um, I will share those right over. And then for editing, uh, they can just go to filterpixel.com editing where they get the editing plugin. Now for filter pixel uh, culling, you get a 14 days free trial. So you don't need to add your card. You don't need to do anything. You just download the product, get your 14 days free trial, use it and check whether the AI can help you in culling those photos faster. When it comes to editing, it's totally free. So you don't have to even pay a single amount till the beta is going on. The editing is in beta, which means that the product is totally free to use. Um, wow. You know, and you can just go to filterpixel.com editing, sign up, get the plugin, put it there. If you want to train, you put your photos in 24 hours, we will email you saying your profile is ready to use. Uh, you can use the uh, profiles that are already available and edit like, edit like them. So basically, both of these products are still free. Uh, the culling for 14 days and editing for the entire two, two months uh, till the beta is going on. So you have to take just adapt them into your workflow and see whether this really helps. Apart from that, um, specifically for your group members, uh, 
you know, we we are launching, uh, you know, the lifetime so, uh, edit, editing and culling mm-hmm. together as a package. So if you see culling today, uh, you know, it has been in the market from past two years now, and we are selling it on subscription pricing, which means either you have to pay per month or per year. Uh, when you see AI editing, it's again, it's totally free for now, but then when it will launch, it will be launched on subscription pricing. Uh, where you have to pay per month or per year, but then for our early users uh, and for your group members, we are giving uh, you know lifetime deals. So if you are uh, a member of uh, you know a financially focused group, you can actually get the lifetime deal, which means no subscription. So you don't have to pay per month or per no. year. <clears throat> All you need to wow. do is one time payment. And in one-time payment, you get both culling and editing. Uh, it will be limited. It will be limited to uh, 100 deals, right? But then um, after 100 deals, obviously, we will come out with our subscription pricing. But then though it's limited, we, we would love to uh, support photographers in your community as well, where they can take advantage of paying it once and then uh, using it for their entire future. Nice. Is there a link or a special code for this or something that we need to yes. share? I think we have uh, um, Shivangi's in the chat, so she might have the links in there too. Yes, Shivangi will share the link in the chat on how to get the lifetime um, deal. But then remember, like, even if you don't get the lifetime deal, it's totally free to use. Uh, yeah. the, only, the only thing is once the lifetime deals are over, you uh, have, even if you like it, you have to purchase subscription pricing, right? Uh, yeah. Right now, if you support us, or if you think that the product really works for you, uh, you can actually get the advantage of uh, being a lifetime user. Just lock it in now. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I love this. And we'll let Shivangi share that link in the chat for everybody so they have it. Yeah. But meanwhile, if there are any questions or anything I can help with, feel free, uh, you know, otherwise my DMs yeah. are always open. Um, we, we run, uh, you know, a Facebook community. Uh, the name of the community is Filter Pixel Family. Um, we I'm, I'm going to share that group. Um, yeah. And we keep on doing lives as well to educate uh, people about all the things that they should know about photography, whether it comes to new software of whether mm-hmm. it is something that nobody else actually care about, uh, but we care about, like, you know, people, we, because we want them to grow. So it's a family because uh, we believe that, you know, we, we just want to grow it as a small family, but very engaging family where people can come in and help each other and help each other grow and educate. Um, and at the same time, we keep them educating about what's new is coming in this industry so that they never feel, uh, you know, that they are lagging behind yeah. anyone. Yeah, no. And I think community is such a great way, way to learn. There's so many different levels of experience in a community and you can learn, you know, and then you can help the person behind you. Um, yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ayush, for joining us today. Um, this is recorded, so we're going to have this in here. So I'm sure there'll be a lot more viewers. And um, I think I'm going to put it on YouTube as well. So we get some more exposure there because this is really fantastic. And awesome. I love that you saw a need and you and you filled the need, you know, of what, of what we need for this kind of stuff and time saving. And really, honestly, this can help photographers reclaim time, increase their profits because now they can do more in less time. There's so many things. And the fact that it's personal, I still love, I know it's AI and some people like think, ah, AI, but the fact that you can teach the AI to do what you would do is yes. the difference. It's not like you are getting the same thing every photographer uses it gets. And that is key. And I think that's a, the biggest thing to communicate because I think when people think AI, they think that everything's a robot and it comes out the same, but it does not. And we just saw it. That's pretty amazing. So, well, thank you so much for joining us. And I will Hello. see you inside the, the filter uh, pixel family group. I'm in there. So I'll see you guys in there as well. Sure. Amazing. Thank you so much for yeah. inviting me and giving me a chance to speak about uh, what oh, I absolutely. care about and help others understand what's coming new. All right. Thank you so much, Ayush. Okay. Bye. Bye.